today we want to go to the foundation of public speaking, the very foundation of public speaking, and that is the law of preparation, okay? Preparation. Preparation is very key. Preparation is very important. Uh, preparation, I know some of us here have spoken before, I know, but we want to be able to go back and remind ourselves that, you know what, you cannot deliver what you do not develop or what you have not developed. Okay? You cannot deliver. I think I've given so, so many examples of, have you ever seen a speaker and you're like, ha, ah, I, I, I don't know what she's going to say. Like you fear for them, literally. And then you're like, now, what's coming up next? You're, you think for them, you can even sweat. You guys, like, are you very simple? You're sympathizing with some of these people. But when I, I, I look at a bad speaker, I'm like, oh, God. Okay? And yet they didn't want it, okay? But the trick is the ingredients are in the preparation, okay? And so you cannot deliver what you have not developed. You cannot speak that which you don't know. How are you going to speak what you don't know? Hmm? You have to first know. That is why we say, number one, get to know your niche, and then get to know your audience, and then get to know their pain points and their problems, and then come to know their solutions to the problems, and then start creating your messaging, and then start creating your content. The reason as to why we do all that is that we will have preparation of who am I talking to, okay? What are their problems? So what are, do they want to hear? What will help them? So how can I create it in a way that they will receive it? Do you see what happens? So all that is preparation. So that when you get, when a chance comes and someone just gives you a microphone to speak, they are blowing away, they're like, hey, like, do you usually do this? Like, have you been practicing? And you, because it is inside of you, you know who your target is, you know what their problems are. So you speak and you're like, you spoke exactly, you know exactly what I am going through, okay? And that is a person that has been able to prepare. You cannot share that which you do not feel. You cannot share that which you do not feel. You have to feel it. Do you know that even amongst the problems that, that I told you to write, there are 100 problems in your niche. Do you know that even in those problems, there will be problems that you're more drawn to, that, makes more, that make more sense to you, that you feel more. That any time when they call you, for example, to speak about um, the, the kind of men that single rich girls attract. You'll be like, give me Kazindalo. I will give, but they give, me, give me that Kazindalo in one second. You get it? But maybe when they tell you how uh, rich girls are wasting their lives, you, like, you'll be like, uh, oh, Kale, Kale, we must call our lives, but, <laughs> but, but there will be something that you feel that you, you can deliver like any time even when you are woken up, okay? And then you cannot translate that which you do not have. You cannot translate that which you do not have. How do you translate? Because translate comes by you hearing it or reading it, then you're able to translate because most of the speaking comes from translation, okay? So you cannot translate that which you do not have and you cannot give that which you do not possess. You should possess it before you give it. You should have it. Your heart should be filled with it. You should be overflowing with it. It should be pressed down so you can be able to actually give it. So to give it and to share it and for it to be effective, you first need to have it. Okay? So good communication starts with good preparation. That's as simple as it can get. Good communication starts with good preparation. Even if you were the best speaker and they just landed on you and uh, they just told you to speak about something. Someone can know when you are winging. Have you ever say, seen someone speaking and you're like, you know? <laughs> But there is someone speaking, and by the way, there is a level of maturity in speaking that you arrive to, even when they give you a topic you don't know. Yeah? You, will, you will actually tackle it. Why? Because you have been taking in and taking in. We are all like sponges. We absorb and absorb. So when retrieving comes, we are able to retrieve that information. That sometimes I've done programs with doctors, and someone will, will call me a doctor. Someone, have you ever, like, 
is this what you studied? And it's a doctor asking, and I'm like, no, no this is not what I studied. I am just a host. I am, <laughs> I am just hosting you. And they're like, but the way you talk about things, like you've been supplementing most of my information, you've actually been bringing out clearer than I was bringing, out, bringing it out. And sometimes I'm like, I also don't know how I do it. You get it. But because I've had so many things, I've gone through so many scenarios, I have in, I've interacted with so many things, I have been taking, for me, even when someone is speaking something that I'm less concerned about, it is not in my niche, it has nothing to, to do with me, like wound, wound cleaning. Believe me, I will listen to wound cleaning. And then after that, definitely I will have nowhere to, to, to reproduce it. But when chance knocks, even if it's after 10 years, I will tell you the procedures of wound cleaning. And you will think, I actually studied them. You get it. Now, that is the wisdom, the swiftness of reproduction that God gives you and what, the, uh, uh, what you're able to actually do. Okay? So the best communicators usually communicate. At least, even if it's just bullet points. Okay? They prepare something. At least not to forget their line of thought. Have you ever seen someone speak and they forgot where they were? Or they forgot the point they were making? Or they deviate, or they, they, they do a do detour into a story and they forget the point they were making. So you stick to the story, you even add on things that you were not supposed to add on, so that you can have a comeback. <laughs> hey, kumbe ola alindeyo. But guess what? When you are so good, half the time we are laughing, we even don't know to ola alindeyo. But you're making a comeback in your brain. You're like, where do I turn? Where do I turn? <laughs> and the turning point, hey, who's there? <laughs> but sometimes God helps you to bridge it. And it goes unnoticed. Now that is a good communicator. But when you have, and that is someone who is trying to, to do it without even, but when you have some bullet points here, you realize you will know that <laughs> you get it. So best communicators, usually even if you put your three points down, you do not forget. Because when, uh, especially when it's an interview, do you know that you can come when someone gives you a kazindalo? You can bring your points kumu kumu, and you're like, now this and this, now this and this. Haven't some of us failed in question approaches? Where you thought they were going to ask you nyungu ya mawe straight, and then all of a sudden they just tweaked the question like this, and then all of a sudden you're like, we never studied this one. We never, we never studied this one. <laughs> you know. So if you wing it. Success is improbable, like your own chances. Hmm? <laughs> You're not sure if you wing it. If you work for it, success is inevitable. If you work for it, success is inevitable. So we must be able to preparation versus delivery. We have to prepare what we deliver. We cannot deliver without preparation. Any message that you want to deliver must speak to you before it speaks to others. Any message. Now, these are things that I've sworn by. These are things that I've practiced. These are things that have helped me for so long, and I know that they will help. If it is not touching to you, that is why I'll be invited to speak at a place, and I will prepare five different messages. Five different messages. Do you know how long it takes if you really want to make impact? How long it takes to prepare? It takes time. It takes concentration. Especially if you're not delivering for the sake of delivering. Because they, they is speaking to finish. I never speaks to finish. I always, today, before I even spoke about the grace, because I would have said that, you know what, the mentorship is non-denominational because we, we have Muslims in the mentorship. So they, they, some of them do, did, did not come. But we have actually, we have more than 10 Muslims in the mentorship. I could have said that, you know what, when I speak about the grace, they are going to think this is denomination and it's only for Christians. You get it? Because power development and gift development is for all of us. Because who is going to impact the Muslims if we do not raise an army that actually knows and is awakened spiritually to be able to impact them? Do you get it? So now you realize that everything that you do must be. So when I prepare the five messages, guess what? Chances are I will get into the room that I am going to, whether it's a company, whether it's a church, 
whether it's a corporation, I have been invited to mosques to, to speak, and you enter a mosque and you have to sit in, in the middle of people, definitely you have to, to dress different, but you have to go, because that is where, where you've been called to go, you know? And then you get there, you look at the people, and I've ever talked about the power of discernment, and I need you to look up, uh, it's, it's, a, it's actually, it's, it's in three series part, it's on, it's on YouTube, and you get there and totally everything you prepared, all the four messages you prepared, they do not apply. You feel it in your spirit. You feel unsettled that none of the messages that you prepared is going to help them. And there and then, now the brain has to go into an overdrive of preparing what is going to. And let me tell you, sometimes it's just one word that you feel convicted on your heart. There's somewhere recently I went to speak, and when I got there, the only thing that I felt on my heart, after preparing for five different, you know how you play last play, sleep last night, and then you see you, you wake up in the morning, even when you're driving to the place, you, you're looking over what you're going to say. You can never get used to this. Let me tell you, the day you will get, you will, you will develop familiarity to your gift. This is the day you stop performing. You don't develop familiarity, as in every speaking chance is a chance to impact. And the reason as to why you will even be nervous, even after speaking for a hundred years, it's because you care about the people. I care what you get. So I will be nervous while I'm preparing for it. And even when I am delivering, before delivering, I will be nervous about it. Even when I've spoken for all these years. But just give me a microphone, you will see a different person. Because then, it's not me. <laughs> something else has taken over okay and I am just being a mouthpiece and then I just I just felt I looked at the crowd and in me I just felt that so many people were heartbroken because they did certain things for some people and some people never paid them back and guess what that was the only statement the only statement because of that speaking engagement I have gotten more than 15 speaking engagements based on that one. And by people just seeing on, on social media and they're like, we didn't know, as in, you can be this fiery. You can be this, like, is, is this you? You get it. But no one can know that I was not using my notes. Like, my notes were irrelevant. I had all the gadgets with me there, but I was looking at none. <laughs> because, as in, something else had taken over, and it was just one statement. And let me tell you, when you speak, you can look into the eyes of the crowd and see whether it's sinking or it's not sinking. If you're not making impact, you will know it. And then you will start tweaking words, and then you will start bringing jokes, and then you will start, you're like, Obamba, kwa wa frequency gani. <laughs> let me tell you, there are people that have spoken frequency gana. Some people even make silent prayers while speaking. So that, they're like, I don't know what is happening, but there is a heaviness. Okay? That is why, I mean, there are God's people that you're going to help. So why don't you pray about it? That God who knows their hearts will open to you what they need to be able to hear in that season, in their lives. Okay? So there is nothing like being a public speaker without the enablement of God. There is nothing about that, okay? So make sure that you actually deliver. And then it must touch you. If it hasn't helped you, then it cannot help any other person. Your first audience is you, okay? Your first audience needs to be you. And if you know what you have prepared, if it has touched you, if it has helped you, then go ahead and speak it to others. Make sure that it speaks to you. Make sure it teaches you. Make sure it inspires you, even by the mere fact of you writing it. And make sure that you're excited to deliver it. I don't know if some of you have ever been excited to deliver something. You feel like, yeah, well, well you know, and actually, like, oh, it's going to change their lives. And indeed, it starts by hearing and by feeling it. Because then when you feel it, it is going to land. And then when, even when you have doubts about what you're going to speak, do you know that we will know that you have doubts? While you're speaking, we will know. Because you will either stammer, you will either be unsure, you will not be uncoordinated. Like something just puts you off and we will know that you actually, or you don't believe in what you say. Okay? So I need us to be able to, uh, to prepare as much as 
we can. As a communicator, when you prepare for an audience, make sure that you are working on two messages at the same time. And I'm going to explain that in a, in a few. Make sure that you are working on two messages at the same time. And the message, or the first, what, you, what, what I usually do, one of the messages that I prepare is usually very specific to them and the situation. Very specific. Remember, I do up to, uh, up to five. So I keep alternating. Very specific. And I'm like, because I usually ask, okay, am I speaking to the marrieds? If they are not, if they are mixed, how many are of that group are married and how many of them are single? How many are this year and how many are this year? So sometimes they will call you to, uh, to speak about, uh, let me say, um, customer service. Okay, and then you will ask, okay, how many of them are top management and how many of them are subordinates? Because the, you have to speak to them differently. So you realize that when I know that this is customer care, when I go to immigration to speak, and I know that they, are, they have their bosses, their funders and all that, and then they have the, the, the subordinates, the general, uh, the general working force. And so I know who to target with which message. So now it is very, one of the messages or two of the messages in those that I prepare will specifically specifically be speaking to them and their needs will be tailor-made or custom-made okay so most of the times the best me the best message that I deliver okay is not specific to them but it can be to individuals and where they are and what is going on okay so you've called me to MTN and you want me to talk about Customer care. I will come with one message tailor-made for customer care. And will come with another message, just a free message to the people in that room, okay, that is not connected to customer care. And I will tell you this. Most of the times when I do, I end up doing both messages. I will deliver what I came to deliver. But when I feel on my heart that something has to be topped up, I will switch to the message. And then most people will say, I wish you started with what you, what you said last, because that is where I am. I am stuck. That is where I am. So it is not specific, tailor-made to their need, but it is specific to people's needs and what they are going through. So you see how you do not just go to a place and you've just prepared one line of thought. Because chances are when you get there and you feel like um, you've started on it and it is not moving or you've started on it and it's not really blessing or applying to people and you can read it because a good speaker is a mind reader. A good speaker is a mind reader. You must be able to look into the eyes of people and see a person who is aloof, you will know them. A person who is saying a malady, you will know them. <laughs> a person who is saying a tumaridabude, you will hear, I mean, she is wasting her, our time. You will know them. And a person who is soaked in learning, you will know them. And when the whole crowd is soaked in learning and they're taking in everything, they're downloading everything you're saying, you will also, because you will have a witness of the spirit. You will know that you are connecting with their, with their spirits. Okay. And then the questions to ask yourself, number one. What do I want people to see? So many of you, when I, uh, when I, I'm cementing the, the first message that I talked about, so many of you have had so many messages that I usually go back to, okay? Messages of getting unstuck because chances are we are all somewhere stuck in the world. Even if it's the biggest CEO, even if it's... So those generic messages, they apply to everyone. For example, there is no day you will talk about attitude and it will not concern everyone in the room. There is no way you will talk about priorities and it will not concern everyone in the room. So you realize that there are those messages that can apply anywhere. So make sure that you have one of those messages under your belt. And then you have the specific message that I talked about. Because then either of them, one of them can always save the day. And then number two. What, number one is what do I want people to see? Number two, what do I want people to know? So that means to see is important. To know is important. What do I want people to feel? Because this should be something that they feel. Because every end of your speech, you should be able, or every end of your point, you should have an action point. It should be actionable. Do, don't, you don't speak for the sake of speaking. You speak that there will be transformation. And transformation does not happen exactly when you are there. There can be excitement while you are speaking, but transformation happens later. 
when people leave the room and they can still remember the, your voice. They can still remember the message. But now if you don't give them a call to action, okay, or if they don't feel excited while receiving the message, chances are they will never revisit that message or they will never think about it again if it does not touch them. So what do you want people to feel? And then what do you want people to do? Very, very, very important. What do I want people to see? What do I want people to know? What do I want people to feel? What do I want people to do? So while you're preparing any message, make sure that all those questions are answered. Hmm? Because then they must do something in order to change their lives. We don't change lives by consuming. We don't change lives by hear, listening. That's why even the Bible says, be doers of the... That means there has to be doing in order for transformation to happen. So now if you don't give them an action point, they have nothing to activate. So they will go saying, ha, well, what did they, oh, they, the, the other woman preached. The other man, ah, oh, he said a lot of nice words, a lot of nice words. But they are not going to do anything and so that's not going to be, uh, to be helpful. So these questions might seem so simple, but I think... It has taken me so many years to be able to come to that place of knowing that this criteria must be fulfilled in order for any change to happen. Because I do not just speak. I am a transformational speaker. You do not just speak. You are a change maker. You are a change agent. You are a transformational agent, a transformational speaker. If your words are not going to transform anyone, I'm giving you permission to be an introvert. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I am giving you an, a permission to be cute and holy and an introvert. Sorry? No one should tamper with your peace. Mm. Because even the Bible says that a fool is considered wise when they do what? But after speaking, everyone is like, oh, <laughs> I have ever told, uh, those are not my words, guys. Those are not my words. You'll be here. Ah, but Bahati keeps abusing us. Bahati keeps, no, 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 no. Uh, those are not my, Binobigambo, Wanji, Wanji, ah, ah, Bigambo Michi. Aha, that is, <laughs> that is what I was waiting to hear. Be no be gambo, be to kuvu. <laughs> okay, so if it has worked for me, I know for sure it can work for you. And let me tell you, there is no place, God has helped me. I don't know how many places I've spoken to. I don't know how many countries I've spoken, I've, I've gone to for speaking, but there is no single day. I've, I don't know the number of TVs. I don't know the number of radio stations or the number of um, articles I have written, newspapers, or um, I don't know the number of posts that I've put on social media ever since I started. But there is no Single post I have ever put out, single speaking engagement I have ever delivered, and it has not been transformational. There is nothing that, like that that has ever happened. So everything, even if you give me two minutes, let me tell you, in this, uh, uh, the devil fights in so many ways. There is a country I went to, and I was on program to speak. And guess what? There was someone who was unsettled about me speaking, and I didn't know. But, as in, they have paid for my air ticket, they have paid for the hotel, they have paid for my pocket money, <laughs> and I have gone. So I'm in the room. Huh? Naze, naze. <laughs> so, but, uh, and someone was like, ah, but I think you should, give, you should give her a few minutes. And guess what? In my heart, I was not, you know, like you're not troubled. Eh? And guess what? I, even when I was traveling, I was in a fasting season. And I told God, I'm not breaking my fast because I'm traveling. Even when I got into that hotel room, I was like, God, I'm making this at your altar that you will move with me to everywhere I go. The minutes that they gave me, hmm? they had big speakers, people from where, people from where, people from where. I stood up to speak. 
I made sure that I work within the time that I have been given. I didn't go any minute even beyond. I actually left them, left for them some minutes. And guess what? Immediately, they announced lunchtime. Everyone was all over me. And I got more than 30 students signed up. 30 students signed up. Everyone was like, most of the campus students were like, I want to be like you. I'm going to engage my father. Like, how much is the program? Um, I, am, I, am, I am joining. Uh, uh, how much? Like, where did you, where do you get these things from? Like, government or, or government officials? Like, people? And, like, they did not go to the main speaker of the day. They did not go to others that spoke for so long. They did not. But I spoke for, I don't think they were even 10 minutes. So you see, you don't need many minutes to transform lives. You just need to be sure that what you prepared, number one, it touched you, it inspired you, it spoke to you, and so it will speak to everyone else. It is transformational that someone is going to think about it. They are still in my inbox asking me when I am going back. And they, they were called, some of, some of them were even calling me. They traveled back to UK, and now they are calling me. Nagamba, tugenda kukolida platform. You're going to come. Tugenda baso mbaba and tuwa UK vona. You get it? But it came out of a 10 minutes speech, okay? So I am praying that you will get to that time and speak, and people even get goosebumps. And they're like, but they're hearing ordinary, because you're not speaking the tongues of angels. You're not speaking an odd, a different, not gibberish. No, you are speaking English, the same words they have had for all their lives, but now they have a new meaning. And that is what you actually do when you, when you do that. So this thing, okay, make sure that. So when, what do you want them to see? It should be their possibilities. What you want people to see. Remember the question one we said? Whenever I speak, I want people to see what they are capable of. Have all of you felt whenever I speak that there is a possibility that you didn't know was there? Right? Does it make sense now? That every time you come here, you feel like, ah, I have heard this word before, but why is it making so much sense right now? Why is it that I have like, I feel like a different power. I feel a different energy to go and do something. And yet I have heard this same word. So people should see their possibility. Okay? People should be able to see their possibility. How we view things determine, determines how we see things. So, the people that you're speaking to have a point of view. And their point of view for the longest time has formulated their life. And their life has been in cycles. And now what they want from you, you should be a speaker that interrupts people's cycles. Okay? A speaker that shows them possibility where there is no possibility. A speaker that shows them their strengths even when there is no strength. It's not, it's not that you didn't know about God's grace and the saving grace, okay? But I think I brought it, I articulated it in a different way that made it, gave it a different meaning. And you saw the possibility of how your life, one after another, God has been saving you and snatching you from different scenarios that could have consumed your life. And that was the saving grace in work, okay? So your point of view determines how you do things. So when people see their possibilities, their world expands. Their world expands. People start believing in marriages. People start believing that they can be wiser. People start believing that the promises of God are yes and amen. And it just goes out of the papers of the Bible and it becomes a living thing that is seen in their lives because you have shown them that these possibilities are actually okay. People start to see how beautiful they are. People start to see how eloquent they are, how empowered they are. And they're like, you know what? I've been belittling myself all this while, but there's a bigger thing inside of me. I'm just a dynamite that is waiting to explode, okay? But let me prepare so that by the time I explode, there is transformation that is happening. So you are empowering them so that they can see the expanded possibilities. And you want to shift people's mindsets into asking, can I, okay? Can I do this? Can I do that? How can I do that? 
Remember, they were believing they can't. And now they're asking, they start, they are starting to ask positive things. How can I do this? That means someone has shifted their mind from the negative thinking of, I can't do this. And now they're asking, how can I do this? So they're willing to ask for help. They're willing to start. They're willing to even give it a simple thought to think about it. That is transformation that has happened. Okay? And... You're erasing doubt, right? When you show someone possibility, you're erasing the doubt. Maybe an auntie of them told them it will never, they will never, they will never be of importance. And now you're saying, think again. Your auntie is just breath and body. But there is a God that created that breath and the body. And he predestined. So you're, you're showing someone that, by the way, your auntie's words have nothing on you. Even if it's your mother who said something against you, that no, not your mother. You are here on an important mission, and guess what? Your mother was just a, a vessel through which you were born. So her assignment, chances are she was supposed to give to you, and that was her assignment. And now you also have an assignment to fulfill. So if you dwell on the past, I said so and so said this, I said so and so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's run very fast because our time is actually um, it, it, it's, it's finished. But so many people are actually scripted and continuously scripted with a scarce mindset. Okay, so that means it's our job to go and erase that scarcity and show them that there's plenty, there's abundance. You know, they can be anything that they actually want to be. If you're writing, how we view things determines how we do things. So when you start telling them how they possess the, aband the abundant mentality and you deliver every message from that outlook and you're a firm believer that everyone has greater possibilities and you want to help them see those possibilities, you're going to be a speaker that no one can even rate. Okay? That no one can. So ha do, you, have you, do you see that speaking is not just speaking? Do you, speaking that, do you see that speaking has a mission? Do you know that now it's a calling? That it's a gift that you must develop, that you must prepare, that when you deliver the hearts of men, you are holding the hearts of men in your hands. And where you want them to face is where you want. So if you want to bring doom, you can bring doom. If you want to bring healing, you can bring healing. Okay? So I need you to look at yourself as the most important person that God has ever created and you're partnering to be able to to change people's uh, uh, words uh, with that. Number two, what do you want them to know? Their value. You want them to see their possibility and then you want, to, you want them to know their value. Now, I want you to base on the previous point when I was speaking, okay? When I was talking about what you want them to see and I said possibility, do you know that what I was empowering you to see is the value that you have in people's lives? Do you connect the dots now? That you show someone that beyond a shadow of doubt, you can doubt all you want, but I'm here to show you that I do not doubt your capabilities. I do not doubt how worthy you are. I do not doubt that you deserve a better life, that you deserve a better marriage. I do not, whichever case you do, your value, okay? So you want people to know their value. Many people have been beaten down and discouraged by others. And as a result, this is what has happened. They don't recognize their own value. And I think some of us have been even. Because of what has happened to us, there is a time we didn't recognize our value. And we needed someone to stir that in us and, and re-inform us. Do you know that part of what I do in this mentorship is to reintroduce you to yourself? Because there are parts of us that we don't know. And sometimes I don't do it by babysitting you. And you all know that I don't babysit. Okay? Sometimes I do that the hard way. By giving you assignments on the day you sign up for mentorship. <laughs> Haven't some of you ever asked yourself, like, how comes immediately I send the money, I get assignments in my inbox. <laughs> I like, should have waited for me to settle in for one week, two weeks, and then you give me us, and then you take me through the assignment. Wapi, I'm not taking you through the assignment. Can't you read? Wanji, don't you know what to do? Start. <laughs> then we will correct as we, as we go. 
It's like a mother hen or a mother bird that says that, you know what, I cannot be bringing food every time. So we must go together. So what I'm doing, I know that we're going but I'm going to put you out there, out of the nest, pew, release you. Hey, hey, you feel the word is ending. And then all of a sudden, you learn the rhythm of the wings. And before you know it, you're, I'm flying. I am flying. And before you know it, you can fly back to the nest. You can actually go and also look for something to eat. And then you can fly back to the nest. Okay? So you want people to see their value that they were created uh, for that. Okay? So that means you're changing people's attitude about themselves. Okay? And so many times, I think you have heard me repeat it so many times, and it's not intentional. It comes with the territory. After you start speaking to people and helping people, you become a lover of people, naturally. That even when you are a man and you are in the mentorship, sometimes when I write a message that I am sending to you, for example, in times of encouraging you, I will end up telling you I value you, I believe in you, and I love you. And I don't do it for the sake. I do it because I mean it. Because we did not cross paths by coincidence. There is a divine plan as to why we crossed paths. Okay? Whether I see you once, whether I see you twice, whether I see you a hundred times, there is a reason as to why we have crossed paths. So I value you. So when you communicate to people, and how you communicate to people as a speaker that you value them, dress the part. You just look anyhow. As in... You've not valued my time, like the time that I'm spending to come and listen to the, you get it. And then respect, uh, communicate with respect. Have you seen speakers who are arrogant? It's like they, they want to chew while speaking, they want to pocket, and they want to cast their legs anyhow, just like that. And then they speak certain statements and you're like, but was that called for? Like, really? Eh? And I will tell you today, that when you hear an arrogant speaker, it's because they are making up for, or compensating for the lack of anointing and for the lack of impact. Because they don't feel it, they must compensate. So they must insult, they must say any, any words to show you you are beneath me and I am the one that is up here. As a speaker, you are a servant. You are a servant. So your antennas must be high to read the signals in the room. And guess what? Everyone is sending different signals. Everyone is sending different signals. The others who are looking at you in contempt, they are like, Kamolinde, There are others who are looking and they are very pessimistic. Uh, let's look for every bad thing that uh, they can remember. But that quote is not like that. Me, I know it. Let me even look for it on Google. She said it wrong. Oh, she copied that. Uh, that is not how original work. We quote it whether it's not original or original. Wanji? Can't you just listen and be impacted? <laughs> I knew you I knew you were going to laugh. <laughs> Uh, so you see that a lot of things actually happen. I don't think that we are going to, <laughs> to finish what we need to say. But uh, num <laughs> let's go to number three. But before we say number three, if you're writing, say, the purpose of communication isn't to impress. Okay? The purpose of communication is not to impress your audience, but it is to empower your audience. So make sure that you empower your audience as much as you can, okay? Before we, uh, uh, let's go to number three. That is why I told you make sure that you actually value them, okay? And they know that you actually value them. Communicate that value to them, okay? Number three, what do I want them to feel? You want them to feel empowered. You want them to feel like this person has gotten power, and has just given it to me and authority to go and do what I have to do. So that is what, that is what you want them to feel, okay? So the purpose of communication, you are not, you're not impressing anyone. You're not impressing anyone. You want to empower them. You want to show them that there is, there is a, an ability inside of you. You want to show them there is something that you can do. 
you were thinking, you were looking at it all the bad, bad, the wrong way, but there's something that you can be able to do, okay? And here is you're embracing people's potential. By the time you're empowering them is you're telling them, I know you have potential. And let me tell you, when you become a speaker, you can look at someone in the room, even when they are the dirtiest, and they seem the most confused, and you will know that this person is gifted. And when you speak to them, there's a way you'll pat them in the back and you tell them that, you know what, next time I see you, I, I know you're going to be different. Next time I see you. And that person, like only that statement can change their lives. They will even go back and bathe. They will shave. They will put on cologne. They will be revived again. And they'll be like, if a stranger saw something in me, that's, that means there's something I was not seeing in myself. Okay, and you've empowered them because you have shown them the potential that they actually have. And this is what ha has happened um, to me most times uh, because when you have God, it's an added advantage in this kind of work when you know God because there is a discernment that you get. And sometimes you'll even get words of wisdom. There are people I have looked at and I will be like, the situation has brought you to where you are. But you have given yourself so many chances and these chances are not to be wasted. And sometimes I will say something that is happening in their lives. Sometimes I don't know that it is happening. It's after some time they're like, do you remember when you came and you told me this? This is exact, that's exactly what was happening in my life. But that day confirmed to me that God still knows me. That day confirmed to me that I still can make it in my life. So, and they will tell me, I started a business and the business is thriving. And sometimes they will come to me. Do you know how many tithes I have eaten even without being a pastor? <laughs> you know, someone just says the first fruit is coming to you. You know, I'm, I'm sending this and it's my first fruit. I'm sending this and, and it's my tithe. And I'm like, God, where did, where, when did I get, get here? And it's like, let me, I'm like, I have held on to every single word that you have said. And God has brought those words into fulfillment in my life. So you empowered them. You want them to feel empowered. Give people permission to succeed. Okay? That is empowering them. Sometimes when you tell someone, you don't need permission to, uh, from anyone. Some people have lived their lives like forever they need permission from someone to succeed. So when you tell them you don't need permission, sometimes you think you're just saying it for the sake of saying, but someone is released from their bondage. They are like, hey, I don't need to, to ask whether it is right or not right. If I feel it and I feel it in my heart, then I should go. And someone, before you know it, has signed up for, for a master's and they have finished it and they are in a very good job and they're like, you know what? I had always thought someone had told me you can never do life like that. And so for the longest time, I was looking for people's permission to be able to do the things that I am supposed to do. Okay. So, and then you make sure that you invite collaboration. People feel empowered when you invite them to collaborate. Hmm? You work together in agreement. Hmm? You work together in agreement. When I call, when, when, I, when, I, when I call you a beautiful coach, when I call you, I am not just saying that. I'm inviting you into a collaboration to see yourself as that person. And indeed you are that person. But sometimes it takes you getting to those places and then you're like, I think she had a point. You get it. But sometimes in the making and in the process, it just feels like it's, mm, I think she's just saying it, but uh, <laughs> you get it. Eh? So that means every word that comes out of your, word, uh, of your mouth counts. It either gives life or death. So make sure you're wise, you're, you're, you're very wise while choosing your words, okay? And then you encourage ownership for people to own up their lives. That is empowering them. You like, own it. I don't know how many times you've had me to, to say that. Take back control. Sit on that steering wheel. Don't let another person, you, you let another person sit on the steering wheel of your life and then you still want, but uh, uh, you're driving me to Ginger, but I was going to Entebbe. And, and you're like, but you're t that, that, that is high speed. But you give them the right to sit in the, in, in the driving seat of your life. Okay? And you're like, Bantwala misindi. Bantwala ku speed. As in, just say, you know what? Uh, you know what? I thank you so much for your service uh, this far. 
I think, yeah, you should be able to fire and terminate some people from your life. And you're like, you know what? Please, uh, just just pack, okay? And then you're like, see me and you. It's not that I don't appreciate. I really, I really appreciate the fact that we have come uh, together. But it's time that I start driving my. But you don't know how to drive. It's okay. I will gamble. I will drive on the shoulders for some time, and maybe I will make a few accidents on the way, but eventually I will learn. Because then it shouldn't be any of your concern whether I know how to drive or I don't know, because it's my life. Can you let me be? <laughs> so, <laughs> these things sound like a joke, but I mean them. I mean them. So when you tell people, take ownership of your life, some of them wake up. It's a wake-up call for them to be empowered, okay? Because you want them to succeed. And then ask them to hold themselves accountable. I think I've said this also a thousand times, okay? So I'm just giving you the formula of what I do day in, day out. Whether you followed me on Hold My Hand, whether you followed me anywhere I speak, as in I, told, I tell people, be your best accountability program, okay? And sometimes get others to also uh, 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 keep you in check, okay? Because it's not true until it can be checked by an outsider. Yeah. If you think, uh, you know, I'm going to, to just decide my things and then I'm going to do my things and then there should be an independent body. That is why we have, uh, what, what is it, what, what is that? UN? Yes, as in they check the quality control. Yeah. Okay. But for you, you can be here saying, ah, my cream has the best ingredients, or my coughing syrup, or my, you, you know those things, because everyone that creates something thinks they have created something. Until you saw even the maze that they were giving out during COVID, they, when they took it through the quality control, they said, this is not proper for human consumption. And how many tons of flour were they? Like, there were so many. And I was like, oh God, all those are going to be poured. But they cannot, there is moss in there. And it can kill. And so this is for animals. Some of it was even discarded, not good for animals. So you realize that sometimes we need accountability for some, and that is why it's good to have a mentor. Because then they can tell you that according to the steps that you've been taking, let your growth be organic. Don't outrush yourself and don't go too slow, but make sure that you measure your, uh, your, your working. So empowerment is an incredible gift that you give to another person to believe in, the free, in their freedom and to be successful, but it also help them, uh, helps them to know that they can believe in other people. You see? So what I do for you, I don't just do for you. I do for so many others that are going to come, the ones that you're going to impact, okay? So when you impact someone, you're not impacting, impacting them for their sake. No, you're impacting them to extend the same kindness to another person. So that means you're replicating yourself. And that's very powerful. Very, very powerful. But so just know every kindness you extend, it does not die with another person. That same person, well, they, they, there's an example about, it was a country song, I think. One person uh, found a homeless person and gave them something to eat. And then um, this homeless person also went and found another homeless person and was like, I will share with something. So like they paid it forward that the kindness that was done, actually this person, uh, it, was, it was actually a waiter. So someone walks into a, into a restaurant, sees this waiter, she was even pregnant, Bambi, she's working. And this person saw it as like, you know, this person must be in a very bad condition. By the time they're in this Kadaina doing this. So she left her some money and wrote on a napkin and said, let this kindness not die with you. Yeah. So what that lady did, she found another person. She, of course, she, she went through with her life, but she did not stop there. At one point, she remembered that someone helped me in the time of need, and she helped another person. And it became like a chain that people would remember that someone helped me in my time of need and actually uh, helped me. So number four, what do I want them to do? To apply and multiply. So your challenge as a speaker is to take an audience from the know-how to the do-how. <laughs> eh? The know and to the do now. Like now. Implement now. So if you want them uh, to be able to apply, make sure that you're taking them from point A to point 
to point B. And our time is fast spent, so that means we will have to have a, a part B for that, okay? So the speaker's challenge is to take your audience from the know-how to the do now. Make sure that you impact, yeah, do now. Uh, the, the how to do, yes, because then you give them the criteria of how to do. And uh, I usually give a simple step that when you give a point, you give, uh, you give an example and then you give an action point. When you give a point, you give a story as an example and then you give an action point. A story cements your point. And then an action point gives some pe people what to do so that they can be able to do now because then you want it to be transformational. Transformation is a complete, tra it's a, it's a complete process that it has a place, it starts, and then it has a place, it goes, okay? So that means when you just speak and leave them in the middle, it has not been transformational. Do you know what you have done? You've just inspired them. You've just most motivated them. But you can motivate people and they can raise chairs. They can even dance around. They can scream. And guess what? Motivation is like bathing, that you need it every day. Mm? Once you don't bathe, you smell. When you're not motivated, you get demotivated, okay? But when someone is transformed, that means you moved them from point A to point B, and now they know. Now, if they don't change, it will be them to blame. Like they will say, I stood in my own way. I knew what to do, and I didn't do it, okay? So it will not now come to you. So that is what it means to be a powerful speaker. The purpose of communication isn't to impress anyone. Remember, that's what we said. So it is to make sure that you empower your audience. And for today, we're going to stop there. We will have a, a, a part B sometime, but I, I'll make sure that I run through part B very quickly uh, in less than 15 or 20 minutes next time so that we can be able to also cover that day's work. I am so serious. When you come here, I, you should be able to get the value that you came for. That is why I put in time to make sure that I, I am here and we interact and we get the best out of this session. So thank you for coming. Have a great night.